Hello, uh, my name is Mark Boyer and this is a follow-up video to my uh, Renaissance and Shortbread uh, video. And it's to give greater insight and the best way to do this is through historical references to uh, First Pass Effect. Okay, now let's start with a really negative one that actually has some basis in truth. Uh, way back in the 30s and 40s, uh, people, the CIA, or uh, its equivalent back then, said that uh, pot led people to murder, and uh, it was laughed off. Okay, But in reality, there is a basis for this, and I'll use the, uh, the most obvious one, which are the hashish assassins. And the word assassin comes from hashish aside from them okay now uh, they actually used hashish as a ritual before going into battle which produced the first pass effect and they also used it after battle uh, in, in first pass effect to rid themselves of the horrors of what they did in battle uh, but uh, that's a that's a, a more contentious issue uh, is the history of it and the Turks but what is not disputed in history is how the Zulus used it during the Boer Wars at the turn of the 19th or the 20th century in the 1900s. Uh, back then it was well documented that uh, the Zulu witch doctors, uh, prior to going into battle, gave a witch's brew to all the soldiers okay, that were going into battle and did this big dance and ritual and they all passed out and they woke them up and they told these soldiers that they were going into battle and that bullets wouldn't hurt them. Okay? No matter what happened, nothing could stop them. Okay? And it's a collective conscience thing and these witch doctors knew what they were doing. Okay? Uh, they awoke uh, while in dream state all of these warriors convinced them that they were impervious to death and they said there's your enemy the ones who are going to destroy your world go for them and they attacked at dawn over and, and, and decimated the boars okay and the the accounts were uh, horror stories of how basically it looked like the living dead crossing over because they just kept marching on with arms gone. Uh, just totally deformed. But it was an ugly sight. And it's well documented in history that that was done through basically what we call, scientists call today, a first pass effect. Now that's powerful, okay? And I can see where they'd like to bury that fact, okay? Now let's go back to the Renaissance. During the Renaissance times, uh, it, you know, and I'll use that as a, a better example, okay? Uh, a first pass effect has everything to do uh, and is best done uh, in a large group of people of, sim of similar interests and mindset because it's a collective conscience thing first. Okay, these Turkish hashish dens in Europe uh, would host events for artists, host events for painters, host events for musicians, host events for philosophers, and they had a calendar, and people would book ahead of time for these events. And when they woke up in Dreamland, which I express in the last one by eating too much hashish products. Uh, they uh, experienced first and foremost a first pass effect, a, a first pass effect, and experienced the collective conscience that comes from a first pass, uh, first pass effect. And the reality is, as uh, the world is looking uh, uh, for enlightenment, okay, so people of like pursuits. Uh, anywhere in the world can do what the uh, uh, hashish dens of the of the age of the Renaissance did back back then, 
and with hashish. Just eat, you know, make, eat some hash. I'm saying you can do it with my cookies, and my cookies are special. They really are, okay? Uh, I, I really have a unique recipe. But technically, you can do it with any good pot cookie recipe uh, and uh, eat too much eat too much of the cookies that you're and that's it and you will produce a first pass effect if you take a lot more than you're used to taking uh, it does cause you to pass out uh, four hours after you pass out you need a friend to wake you up okay while in in REM sleep and it's easy to diagnose that uh, by seeing flickering of eyes behind when you wake up from that dreamland from the dream you're in you enter reality but to you it's a dream okay and there is a greater collective conscience and if you're with a group of people uh, who are musicians for example who play music together you will start playing music you'll play better music if you're philosophers start philosophizing you know talking you'll have great conversation uh, if you whatever the group is you'll enjoy it you'll you'll participate and benefit from it uh, because you will feed much better into the collective conscience and let's face it we're facing our end times okay and the collective conscience is something that many, many, many people out there think needs to be triggered in order to move on into a better world. And that's an individual thing. I have my pursuits in doing, you know, and maybe people will get my message better. But, you know, there's a lot of messages out there. There are many roads to nirvana. Okay? And... uh the age of enlightenment is uh, will prove that uh, everybody was wrong and almost right. And uh, what can I say? Uh, we're in our end times, so everybody says, and uh, we're supposed to be able to do that by triggering uh, our age of enlightenment. Now they did it back in the Renaissance times with these hashish dens. And uh, imagine if every community in the world, from now till kingdom come, started doing uh, in their own groups uh, uh, what I expressed very well in the last video. And uh, what could happen is your enlightenment of your group, and that's good enough. Right now, that's good enough. Okay? And hopefully it could collect... And maybe someone could organize a world let's do this day. Okay? Uh, what can I say? Something needs to be done. Uh, I'm offering my effort to collect, trigger the collective conscience into a metanoia, a total about face and how we think, and uh, an agent to help and assist this uh, might be through a first pass effect. Uh, and uh, why not? Why not? Uh, go view my other video. I got a short little pamphlet on it. If you're interested in getting my cookies, contact me through my Remarkable Foods food and beverage page on Facebook. Okay, or, you know, what can I say? Uh, have a good day. Uh, I hope this is inspiring and uh, enjoy. Thank you.